In this video, we'll do an exam review on lymph, lymphedema, and lymphangiectasia. But first, a few important exam questions. Question number one, where is the origin of the thoracic duct? Number two, what are the features of Hodgkin's lymphoma? Number three, in which blood vessel do lymphatic vessels drain? And number four, what's the histology of lymph capillaries? Now, lymph, lymphedema, and lymphangiectasia. Lymph is a fluid that is very similar to blood plasma. The cells of the lymphs are mostly lymphocytes. Lymphocytes are initially generated in the bone marrow. The other lymphatic organs are tonsils, spleen, thymus, and the lymph nodes scattered all over the body. The spleen is the largest organ. Now, functions of the lymph. Number one, one of the main functions of the lymphatic system is to return the excess fluid into the venous side of the blood. Leakage of fluid from capillaries results in accumulation of fluid in the interstitial space. The amount of fluid in the interstitial Interstitial space depends on number one capillary pressure, number two capillary permeability, number three oncotic pressure, and number four interstitial fluid pressure. So the amount of fluid in interstitial space depends on capillary pressure and permeability, and oncotic pressure and interstitial fluid pressure. Number two, lymphatic system absorbs plasma protein. Normally, of the total 20 liters of the plasma reabsorbed, 17 liters the filtered plasma is reabsorbed directly into the blood vessel while remaining three liters are left in the interstitial spaces. So how is it absorbed? The wall of the lymphatic capillaries and lacteals are permeable to macromolecules. So three liters of protein per day go back to the vascular system through the lymphatic system. So what's a lacteal? Lacteal is a lymphatic capillary in the small intestinal villi and it absorbs fluid electrolytes, proteins, and dietary fats. And the third function is the lymphatic system also removes the waste products, bacteria, damaged cells, and toxic substances. And in the process, the lymph node get enlarged. This is known as lymphadenopathy. So what are the causes of lymphadenopathy? Infections, for example, tuberculosis, HIV infection, infectious mononucleosis, or any chronic or viral infections. Number two, connective tissue and autoimmune disorders, systemic lupus erythematosus and rheumatoid arthritis are the example and cancers both primary and secondary metastatic cancer they may cause lymphadenopathy and number four lymphoma which is also a form of cancer in which there is Hodgkin's lymphoma and a non-Hodgkin's lymphoma so what are the features of the Hodgkin's lymphoma the Hodgkin lymphoma causes painless rubbery lymphadenopathy characterized by reed strenberg cell we'll discuss this later when we discuss Hodgkin's and the non-Hodgkin lymphoma is characterized by increased proliferation of the B and T cells. Now lymphatic system. Lymphatic system is made up of larger network of lymph capillaries, lymph vessels, lymph nodes, lymphoid organs and lymphoid tissues. So what are lymphatic capillaries? The lymphatic capillaries have a single layer of endothelial cells and an absent or fenestrated basement membrane. So lymphatic capillaries have a single layer of endothelial cells and an absent or fenestrated basement membrane. So the lymphatic system is different on both sides. On the right side, the lymphatic capillaries empty into the larger lymphatic vessels and lymphatic trunk. The right lymphatic duct drains the right side into the right subclavian vein that leads to superior vena cava. On the left side, the lymph from the rest of the body enters the bloodstream through the thoracic duct via lymphatic trunk. And a thoracic duct empties into the left subclavian vein that leads to superior vena cava. So on the left side, the thoracic duct and in the left subclavian vein and on the right side, the right lymphatic duct drains into the right subclavian vein. So where is the origin of the thoracic duct? Thoracic duct begins below the diaphragm in the cisterna chyli. So what cisterna chyli? Cisterna chyli is a sac-like chamber that receives limbs from the lower abdomen, pelvis and lower limbs by way of left and right lumbar trunk and intestinal trunk. So cisterna chyli is the origin of the thoracic duct which receives limbs from lower abdomen, pelvis and lower limbs. How does the lymph fluid moves back to the heart? The lymph vessels have valves that 
prevent fluid to go back and the lymph fluid is pushed by number one mainly by skeletal muscle contraction number two by smooth muscle contraction and number three by lymphatic duct contraction lymph edema is a collection of lymphatic fluid in the interstitial tissues or body cavities a block in the lymphatic system prevents lymph fluid draining that leads to swelling an extreme form of lymph edema occurs in filariasis which is known as elephantiasis so what are the features of lymphedema lymphedema is a painless condition with some heaviness in the leg in the lymphedema of the leg in the early stages the lymphedema is soft and pitting but in advanced cases it's of woody texture and non pitting so what are the types of lymphedema it may be primary or second now primary lymphedema primary lymphedema occurs if there is a developmental defect with agenesis hypoplasia or lymphatic obstruction the examples of primary lymphedema are turner syndrome klinefelter syndrome noonan syndrome and intestinal lymphatic the primary lymphedema may appear after birth or it may appear at puberty which is known as Magee's disease and it may appear late in life. So primary lymphedema may occur after birth, at puberty or late in life and occur due to agenesis, hypoplasia or lymphatic obstruction. Lymphedema of hands and feet in the newborn in Turner syndrome occur due to defective lymphatics. In cystic hygroma, dilated lymphatic channels in the neck produce webbed neck so webbed neck in cystic hygroma and edema hands and feet in turner syndrome and in the primary lymphedema familial congenital lymphedema examples are milroy's disease and Magee's disease Magee's disease appears at puberty now secondary lymphedema in secondary lymphedema the lymphatic channels are dilated whereas in primary lymphedema there was agenesis hypogenesis hypoplasia or lymphatic obstruction but in secondary lymphedema the lymphatic channels are dilated and the most common cause of secondary lymphedema is i already explained filariasis in which there is elephantiasis another common cause is recurrent bacterial infection by streptococci group a streptococci they may cause recurrent bacterial infection leading to secondary lymphedema number three trauma tumor surgery and radiation may also cause secondary lymphedema and number four tuberculosis dermatitis pregnancy and rheumatoid arthritis may also cause secondary lymphedema so in the secondary lymphedema after mastectomy edema of the arm is due to what it's due to the removal of the axillary lymph node and lymph circulation blockage damage to the thoracic duct occur after malignant lymphoma or trauma that causes lymphedema now lymphangiectasia so what's lymphangiectasia usually group a streptococcal infection causes septic cellulitis in the skin and subcutaneous tissue but a localized group a streptococcal infection causes dilatation of the superficial lymphatics and that is manifested as red streak on the skin in the line of the lymph vessel so usually group a streptococcal infection causes cellulitis in a skin and subcutaneous tissue but a localized group a streptococcal infection causes dilatation of superficial lymphatic which is manifested as red streaks on the skin and the second lymphangiectasia is intestinal lymphangiectasia in intestinal lymphangiectasia the lymph vessels supplying the lining of the small intestine are blocked resulting in malabsorption syndrome which causes steatoria and loss of protein and why does it occur this occur due to improperly formed intestinal lymph vessels or blockage of lymph flow from the intestine now diagnosis of lymphangiectasia diagnosis of lymph Injectasia is done by small intestinal biopsy. So what does it show? It shows typical gross dilatation of the lacteals of the villi. And we have already discussed lacteals and distension of the lymphatic vessels. So there is dilatation of the lacteals and distension of the lymphatic vessels in the intestinal lymph injectasia. Now answers to the question. Where is the origin of the thoracic duct? Thoracic duct begins below the diaphragm in the cisterna chylae. We already discussed it. A sac-like structure that receive blood from the lower abdomen pelvis and lower limb and it below the diaphragm question number two what are the features of Hodgkin disease it 
because it's painless shrubbery lymphadenopathy characterized by reed Strunberg cells. Question number three. In which blood vessel do lymphatic vessels train? In the left subclavian vein, both lymphatic vessels, thoracic duct and right sided lymphatic duct. They drain in subclavian veins on either side and that leads to superior vena cava. What's the histology of lymph capillaries? The lymph capillaries have a single layer of endothelial cells and an absent or fenestrated basement membrane. The walls of the lymphatic capillaries are permeable to macromolecule protein. So 3 liters of protein goes back into the circulation through the lymphatic system. 